can I ask you that whether, uh, you, uh, you know, is there an effort then to, to try and put some existing tenants on green leases? Is that happening? It is uh, starting to happen, yes. Um, what I want to add is that this is a uh, really not an, an international issue because a green lease in the UK is different from a green lease in France or in Germany. Why? Because, of course, the, the legal environment, the legal requirements uh, of what, uh, what uh, should be in a lease and how it can be enforced and so on are totally different. So uh, there you really have to, to, to look at that on a national level and uh, you will not have a standard as long as uh, lease law um, and jurisdiction is different in, uh, in Europe. Yeah. Uh, so I think it's always difficult to reopen existing leases when they've still got time to run and introduce new clauses but what we've done instead is use the memorandum of understanding uh, part that we talked about earlier in that that BVP guide where we engage with the occupiers and go through with them all the aspects of sustainability and where they're prepared to commit to work with us to improve the current performance and it's hard work because it, you have to get to the right people you have to get the right level of commitment but when you do make that work it can be very powerful I mean we reduced energy emissions in two years in one building by 15%. There was no reinvestment in the building other than working closely together, and it was on the back of originally starting with a memorandum of understanding to work together. So it's very important, that engagement that Paul mentioned. If we're, It is the people in buildings that use the energy, not necessarily the buildings themselves. And you can have an energy efficient building, but it's not working efficiently if the people don't use it properly. Yeah. So behavior change is a key part of that, and, and measurement obviously plays a part as well. In your assets, so isn't sustainability giving the chance of waking sleeping dogs with regards to non-sustainable properties throughout your entire portfolios. Your, your in, in Hermes real estate, we have a, a six billion portfolio of assets, so this is quite big, and we do have quite a mixed range of sectors in there and different types of properties. And it's not that we're going to target every single one of our hundreds and so uh, properties, but it's about actually having a strategy and we were speaking about green leases, we were speaking, you have to identify what are your sustainable improvement points in the life cycle of an asset, accounting for all of those risks that we've mentioned before, in particular legislation, uh, to ensure that for all of those assets, you're actually protecting long-term value, but also taking opportunity of those changes to make value for your investors. And the second very important point is that our main clients are institutional investors. And more and more they are because of increased pressure on governance and the whole risk um, awareness following 2008 and others. We are under a lot of pressure from our investors, whether it's BT pension scheme, but also all of the small pension schemes that we work for in the UK. And it's our way of gaining new institutional investors' clients to demonstrate that actually we are managing those risks actively across the six billions property, not just for the prime property in central London uh, headquarters of Deutsche Bank. And I think that really is for us our greatest market opportunity because I think if there is one message here, it's about this change, like any change, represent a huge market opportunity and it's about how do we capture it. And it definitely has to be a strategy over the life cycle of the building. So we will never go to a tenant and say, even though we have had green leases since 2006, and say, by the way, we want to review the lease. We wait until there is a change of lease or a renewal of the, uh, of the lease, or if we do a refurbishment. It, it comes following the cycle of the real estate market. It has to be part of the investment process. It's not an add-on. But that might make it really, really slow in, in some instances, I guess. Yeah. Well, in France, as Paul said, we have a regulation that all the commercial uh, lease contract has to be added with, an am with a green lease amendment by uh, mid of next year. The surface, which is more than 2,000 square meters. So uh, things are set by that. Uh, what I wanted to add but, uh, about your question is that, in fact, we move slowly from uh, uh, renting square meters to uh, renting building as a service in your question. So what we have to find out is that we have to have a building which has, which has the right flexibility and the right uh, uh, service charges in front of a, of a service that we offer. So if I have a prime property, I, can, I have to give a lot of services. Uh, if I have a second market property, I have to give a certain services for a certain price. And this has to be adapted. 
That's all the question. And this is how we create wealth in our portfolio. Okay. Um, Mark Kramer, you know, the, the question of um, risk and the, the effect of the uh, financial crisis of the, of the last few years has already come up. And I, and I wonder if we could just reflect for a moment on how much of a change um, that has brought to this area. You know, there's less money to go around. Um, or what, you know, how has that changed the appetite for risk and, and, the, and the priorities? Some, somewhat bizarrely, I, I, I think it might have helped um, in that um, everybody's very cost conscious. And one of the big things about greening a building is reducing energy. Um, and by doing that, obviously, you're paying less for it. And I think that's been one of the drivers, because one of the big things we've all talked about is actually engagement with our tenants. And um, there's nothing like... Um, costs in this environment to actually speed that engagement up. So I think ironically it, it's actually helped and it'd be quite interesting to know what, I mean I, and I also think it's got, now got momentum which is something that was probably well we talked about three years ago four years ago, five years ago, we were all sort of dancing around saying green sustainability is really important but now as you can see we've got it on an international level here um, lots of different people are taking it very very seriously um, it's not just the tenants, it's not just the landlords, it's not just the developers, it, it's, it's everybody is, is really getting engaged with it. So in, in Holland it's very much at the top of the agenda and we find our Dutch investors are leading the way in engaging with us and putting more pressure on us. They have, some of them have what they call sustainability universes and you have to actually, when you sit in a room with a Dutch investor, the sustainability person and the money person Sometimes the sustainability person is the key person. You have to get through them first before you can get to the really? money, which is quite interesting. I wonder if there are any other countries that that happens in. Is that, is that really a, a, a Dutch so thing? It happens in Switzerland. I've come across it there before as well, but I haven't really come across it anywhere else. I think, sorry, the other thing I would say is one of the reasons it's gone to the top of the agenda, and I agree with Mark in, in part, is that um, cost has gone through the roof. Like in the UK, mm. in France is the same. Energy costs are just going up. We're yeah. going to deregulate the French electricity industry soon, which will push costs through the roof as well. And, and, uh, and, that, and, and all of that has meant that you know, costs have gone up for us, but they've gone up for our tenants as well. And uh, in a market where austerity is the key, um, anything you can do to drive down costs is, is, is good, is beneficial. And we're seeing the values of our properties dropping over that time as well. So you need to increase your income. You need to improve your performance. Yeah, operational but you have to accept this is going to cost money now, and well, cost you less yeah, later yeah. on. Well, not yeah. Sometimes, but some of those, you know, I mean, I know that Neil, Tatiana, Frank, all of us have a lot, a lot of low-hanging fruit in our bu buildings. We've got some existing properties where you can spend. We're spending at the moment 3.4 million relamping our car parks, but it pays back in 18 months. So yeah, it's cost up front, but in 18 months, our company's going to be earning money. So. Yeah. It's not, there is some cost, but a lot of it can be paid back quite quickly. Okay, Tatiana. And with property people coming together to find property solutions that work. Okay, well, we need to push the government and to take the investment opportunity to build those kind of new financial products with them to allow them to do it. And so the um, positive uh, element yet, uh, we've got a few more years to go before we create beneficial buildings. I think we, we forget that the vast majority of business is made up of very small businesses well yeah the industry leaders have to show the way and uh, the rest has to follow in my in my head that we are to think long term yeah because this is where we create uh, the money <laughs>